A morning like most others. A morning ritual like most others. Nothing is so widespread in its similarity, so common to so many, as the hour that precedes a man's leaving for work. At the end of it, we are split into a million different occupations. At the end of it, this man is a policeman. This man is a policeman. But what other career involves so many jobs and calls the men who do them by one name? What other career demands the services of so many specialists and still refuses each a different title? River policeman, yes. Mounted policeman, traffic policeman, but policemen all. All like this man with a duty to the public and the tough job of protecting life and property. Thames Division, with 36 miles of difficult river to patrol. Such is their vigilance, such is their knowledge of the River Thames, that the gross imaginings of crime writers hardly ever cross their bows. But if smuggling and piracy on the Thames are now reduced to occasional crimes, it's only the patrolling presence of the men of Thames Division that keeps it that way. all drawn from the Metropolitan Force, but mostly men who have served in the Royal or Merchant Navies, the sailor policemen rely on their awareness of the river's daily life. Lighter men are part of that life, and replacing a barge's tarpaulin is as much an act of friendship as part of a day's work. From Teddington Lock to Dartford Creek, there are many crews of three, saving lives, checking property, working in conjunction with other divisions of a police force that serves London well a police force composed of men with a special experience, of men and women who learn to specialise. Famous throughout the world for its roadcraft method of driving, Hendon is the starting point for drivers of the Metropolitan Force and many others, including those of Commonwealth countries. Instruction is based on every eventuality that is likely to confront a driver during his or her career. Fine instruction that's needed to bypass the hazards, not just of an obstacle course, but of having to operate effectively on today's congested roads. At Hendon too, men are trained to ride, as well as high-powered machines, the lightweight motorcycles that are adding to the efficiency of modern police work. More instruction. For this intensive course also includes the teaching of a car's innards, not to enable the crews of crime cars to repair vehicles, but in the well-founded belief that they will drive better if they come to know instinctively the engine's reaction and response to their every movement. As with all specialists, these men are enthusiasts. Unlike most specialists, they cannot confine their enthusiasm to one subject, for above all else, they are policemen. Here, they are learning to drive like policemen. For every future driver of a police car, the final test of his ability is on the skid pan. Of the two cars here, the one in front is driven by an instructor. He's the bandit. It's the task of the driver following him round this treacherous, slippery course to stay firmly on his tail.
This is Traffic Patrol, a fast estate car sent to the scene of motoring accidents. Its crew are highly trained, capable of examining a wrecked car minutely and finding any mechanical fault which may have led to the crash. Specialists once more, but once more, first and foremost, policemen. While one immediately helps the injured driver, it's the other's first job to ensure that passing traffic is warned to steer clear. In the estate car is a compact assortment of modern equipment for this and every other purpose of the traffic patrol. With first aid rendered, now it's important for an ambulance to be hurried to the scene. This is routine, in this case possibly life-saving routine, but still the almost automatic activity that precedes, for a traffic patrol, a big question. What caused the accident? Both men are thinking this now, for it could be they'll have to answer that question in court. What caused the accident? In this case, the answer is not mechanical. A housebreaker's implement. The cause of this accident, a man in a hurry. Now it's a job for another specialist. Now it's a job for the CID. He's asking Scotland Yard's busy information room to send a CID liaison officer. Scotland Yard's busy information room. Alpha 2 to information room. Come in, Alpha 2. Request a dog and handler, please, to be sent to Epping Forest. It's wanted in the search for a missing child. Right, Alpha 2. The search for a missing child. Specialists? Yes, in humanity. Epping Forest is one of London's open spaces now regularly patrolled by men of the Mounted Police. Another specialised branch that is strengthening its hold on today. For a mother, there is hope in the midst of worry. The hope, the comfort even, brought by special people. What other career involves so many jobs and calls the men who do them by one name? Little boy lost. Hopes are higher, but the systematic search must go on. Work must not stop here nor anywhere in Britain's careless capital. To Scotland Yard's laboratories, the CID officer has brought those cutters. He wants science to back his theory that the injured man was involved in a recent robbery. It's no improbable theory, for the officer is another specialist, a policeman who has magnified the art of Sherlock Holmes into something approaching wizardry, who can take and make a scrap of paint, a blade of grass, a matchstick, silent evidence at a man's trial. A lab specialist has been asked to check that these particular cutters were in fact used to force an entry. A piece of metal, similar to a padlock found severed at the scene of the crime, is cut, so that the two cuts can be compared. Forensic science is playing an increasingly important part in the fight against crime. Yet before such a stage as this can be reached, before the investigating officer requires a scientist to confirm his opinion, hours, even days of careful scrutiny of the crime's location have taken place. The specialist finds. The scientist merely confirms. And here, science does confirm. Microscopic confirmation of a policeman's deduction. The injured man is a man of guilt. But still, the search for a little boy goes on. Flashlights are needed now, and approaching night prompts a greater fear. 
the growing fear of a waiting mother and the lonely fear of a little boy. Nothing is so widespread in its similarity, so common to so many, as the hour that precedes a man's leaving for work. At the end of it, at the end of the day, this man is proud to be a policeman. <laughs> 